Hi, John from Racepec. So excited, I have a set of 21 and 18 inch uh, wheels for the Ultra and we're gonna change them over now. So I'll show you how to remove the front wheel, how to remove the back wheel, and we'll have a look at some different tire sizes. So if you come here, we're gonna need a five mil Allen key and an eight mil Allen key. You can leave this one, si this one tight for the moment, loosen this side off and use your Allen key to undo this side a little bit. Once you've undone uh, this one, you can undo the other side. And we've got a rubber mallet. We're gonna give it a little tap to push that through. Take the cap off. And that one's a little bit big. See if we've got a smaller one. Just use an extension bar that fits without damaging the thread. And then you can just tap that through. So the front wheel's reasonably easy to get off. Should just fall through. Now what we need to do is remove the disc and the spacers. So we've got a T30 Torx driver and some Loctite. Taking this disc off and putting it into this one here. Oh, that's tight. So it's a little bit too tight by hand with the T30 Torx, so I've grabbed a driver. So we put the writing on the disc to the outside and the blue dots on this ABS disc to um, the outside as well. And what I'm doing is just putting a little bit of Loctite back on it. Suggest to get them started by hand. You can see it has a little bit of white um, sort of Loctite on there already. But the discs get a fair bit of vibration, so it's good to have them Loctited on. Okay, once you've got them started by hand. Just do them in diagonals. I might just tension them up by hand if I can find that. Excellent. They're all tight. Now we'll go back and fit it on. Uh, you need to put your spacers from your old wheel into your new wheel. So they just press in. Do that before you put the wheel in too far. So we're gonna slide that again into the brake. Lift it up onto the side here, get the axle going through. Line your forks up. Once you get them lined up, you should be able to use a rubber mallet, tap it through, put your end cap back on, 8mm Allen key, just nip that up a little bit. 
good idea to pull down on your forks just to make sure that they center on the axle. Once you've done that, then just nip up these five mil Allen bolts. Why you push down the forks is that way that they're running parallel. If you tighten them and they may be too tight at the bottom and then um, stop the suspension working properly. So I've just nipped them up both sides. And that's, uh, once they're on tight, we'll just check that eight mil bolt on the end, the eight mil cap. Just check them both. You just tighten one and the other one becomes a little bit loose. So keep checking either either one until they're both up reasonably tight. Yep, that's tight. That's tight. And that's tight. And that should be done. So that's your front wheel on. Now we'll go to the back wheel. Put these tools down here. So I've got a 27 mil socket, 14 mil open ender and a 10 mil open ender. And what we're gonna do is take this rear wheel off. Just loosen the 27 mil socket. Take that nut right off, the axle nut. And then just lift the wheel a little bit, jiggle it. And that's out. Careful not to put it in the dirt. Now with the chain, what I normally do is pull it off the sprocket and just sling it over the end of the swing arm. So it doesn't drop in the dirt. And there your wheel's out. So we're also gonna need to change the disc on this and also the sprocket and the spacers. Before we do that though, we've got a couple of tire options here. So these are hard enduro tires. This is a 120 90, 18. This is a 140 80. And these are double green, Midas, Terraforce, super gummy. This is what the pros use. Now, I think this is probably too big, but let's just have a look if it fits. If it actually gets in there, we'll find out. Just want to have a look at the clearance. So, potentially, it could fit. Looks like it would have chain clearance but I think it's probably a bit too much tire for this bike. I don't think we need it that big. So in this case, I'm probably just gonna stick with the 120, which is a pretty big tire. On the Suron X's, you know, we're getting 100 in there. So we'll go and fit that, come back and see how it goes in. Okay, we'll need to remove the rear disc. So again, the riding to the outside and the blue dots to the outside. And a little bit of Loctite. You can see this disc has had a little bit of a hard life. We had someone ride the bike and I think they thought the back brake was a clutch. 
so it got a bit too much use. I think a good um, accessory would be a floating disc for these down the track. That way if they warp, they don't rub as much. Or better still, a bit more regen. Oh. Oh, maybe we should fit the tyres. It's going to be easier without the sprocket on there. No, it's okay, we should be able to Okay. Yeah, this is um, a bit of a cheap way I've extended the Allen key with the axle just to get some more leverage because they are really tight. It's the, not so much that they're tight, it's the locking system they've got on there so they don't vibrate loose. You can see even when they're loose, they're difficult to turn. So a little bit of leverage is gonna help. So we're gonna keep the standard sprocket on it. Later we'll try a larger sprocket. This is a 46 tooth. And we're gonna try a 53. But for now we'll stick with the standard sprocket. Okay, we've got our uh, brand new gummy tire onto the 18 inch rim. Gonna clean the axle quickly, put a little bit of grease. And then we're gonna fit this tire back, this wheel back into the um, swing arm. So the trick here is to have the chain on the side guide the wheel past put our spaces in so we're going to line up the disc the spacer make sure the disc goes into the pads have your axle ready to line it up chain on while you can
line up your spacer bring it through now I didn't need to readjust the chain in this particular case just make sure the wheels completely forward Now you need to make sure that this uh, axle is lined up. If you have a look around this other side, uh, the axle's not lined up. It hasn't gone into the hole correctly. That's got it. So that's a 24 mil. Once that's in there, and your wheel's forward, you can tighten up your axle. So that ridge means you don't need a second tool to tighten it up, which is a good idea. Put your foot under or put the bike on the ground so you can tighten up your axle properly. sure it spins and it's all clear okay so that's a 120 90 gummy tire and I have nearly 10 mil of clearance so that's actually excellent that's a big tire I don't know if you want anything bigger than that as I said we did have a 140 here to test it's an overkill and the reason I wouldn't put it on is it's just heavier but that's what the hard enduro pros would use this tire here, the 140, 140, 80. But I think that uh, 120 is a good size. We'll try it, see how it goes. Obviously it's a bit heavier than the stock, so you will feel it take a bit of snap out of it. But there you go, brand new Ultra with 2118s with competition hard enduro tires. We'll see what make, uh, difference that makes and then uh, let you know, we'll give you an update.